Squarespace has a super cool feature known as the archive block that can help you display content in a collection in a really unique way on your Squarespace website. However, that archive block doesn't have a lot of design options. For that, you'll need some custom CSS, and that's exactly what I'm going to share with you in this video. I'm Becca Harpain from Inside the Square, and all the codes I'm about to share with you are listed in the description below. But without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and I'll teach you how to customize that archive block on your Squarespace website. Let's get started. Here we are inside Squarespace, and I have three different archive blocks already listed on the page outlined here in green, red, and blue. If we click on this archive block and select the edit option, this is where you can see the content we've chosen to display. And then under the display options is where we can choose the style, index list or drop down. Then we have a few other settings like text alignment, how we're grouping the items in the archive and what we decide to display like the group count or the item date. Now, I want you to notice that on this regular text block right here, I've got an option to add a background. I can add a background, a border, I can add a blur to it. We've got a lot of settings here for styling this content block, but archive blocks, they don't have those settings. To create backgrounds and borders, we need to use custom CSS, and that's exactly what we'll do in this tutorial. I'm going to select Exit, and on the left-hand side of the screen, I'm going to navigate to Pages. Then I'll scroll all the way down to Website Tools and then select Custom CSS. I'm going to zoom in on my screen to show you here. These are the three codes that we're using to create the borders around these different types of archives. We have the Archive Block Index, which is outlined here in green. Then we have the Archive Block List, which is outlined here in red. And then we have the drop down outlined here in blue. Now, these three selectors are where we can get really creative. Let's start with this very first one outlined in green, and let's give it a solid background color. I'll say background, and I'll type in a hex color code for a lighter green. Now we've added a background and a border to this archive block, but there's a little bit more that I want to customize. The next thing I want to do is give it some padding. We can see here that the border is right up next to the edge of the text, and I don't like the style of that very much. I think it needs some more room. So let's go ahead and say padding 5px. That's going to pull it away from the edges there. So we've got a little bit of padding between the text and the edge of the archive block. I also love adding rounded corners. So we're going to say border radius. How about 5px here as well? Now we've got slightly curved corners. How about 15px? So we can really see the difference here. There we go. Now we've got some curved corners. We've got the green border, the background color, and we added a little bit of padding. Awesome. It looks even more unique. Now let's go ahead and talk about the next archive block outlined here in red. This is the list layout. Let's say for this list layout, we want the font style to be completely different. How about we say text transform and make it uppercase. There we go. Now we have capital letters. Now let's take this a step further and create a hover effect for these category links. As you can see, my cursor changes when I hover over them, but there's no other indicator that they're clickable. So how about we give them a cool hover effect? I'm going to copy this title right here that says Archive Block Setting Layout List. I'm going to paste it, and then, then I'll add the letter A followed by Hover. This is telling the computer browser the style code I'm about to give you should apply when I hover over the active link inside the Archive Block List. Now let's go ahead and change the color to red, and I'll label that Important so the computer browser knows to pick up on that code. And let's give it a text decoration of an underline. All right, now when we hover over those links, they're going to turn bright red, they're going to get an underline, and it's very clear that these are clickable links that will take you to that category. Pretty awesome, right? All right, we've got one more to take a look at, and that's the archive block dropdown. I think we should give this one a unique background color as well. So let's add a semicolon, and we'll change the background to a light shade of blue that I enjoy. And because it already has a background color, we need to say exclamation point important. And now the computer browser will pick my blue over the background color it's seen before. And let's go ahead and create a hover effect for these category links in here as well. We're going to repeat the same technique that we did for this option up here. We're going to copy the title of this content block. Then we're going to say a hover, and then we can add customization. It's like a text decoration underline spelled correctly. There we go. Now, when we hover over these links, got to add important. All right, we're going to see an underline indicating that they are clickable. Definitely a cool feature to add. Now, all of these archive blocks can have unique backgrounds and borders. You can customize the font style. Just make sure that you're using the correct selector for the type of archive block. 
we have the archive block index layout, we have the list layout, and we have the drop down layout. And if you want to create hover effects for the links inside, make sure you add A followed by the text hover to indicate that your custom code change will only happen when someone hovers over that link inside that type of archive block. After you've customized these codes to your own unique style, select save when you're done and you'll be good to go. All right, my friend, we just covered a lot in this tutorial, and I hope you're inspired to make your Squarespace website uniquely yours. Underneath this video, you'll find all the sample codes that I used in this tutorial, and you'll also find links to related resources so you can learn more about customizing your own Squarespace website. I'm Becca Harpain from Inside the Square, and I've got a lot more to teach you about all the cool things that Squarespace can do. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments and be sure to check out some of the related content linked below. Thank you so much for watching, and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. Find everything you need to make Squarespace uniquely yours at InsideTheSquare.co. That's InsideTheSquare.co.